So, in this session we will see what is the current status of ESG in Indian company. So, this is uh, published in 2020 that is uh, in the responsible business ranking that is that shows the India's top company for sustainability in 2020. And if you see the list possibly you will find that yes few of, few of the company names should be there in the top 10 sustainability company, but also uh, the interesting fact is that the sustainability is led by a service company that is Infosys and the manufacturing companies are there in the list, but typically it is being led by a service company. We will discuss more about the trend of this top 10 uh, sustainability companies, but mostly if you look at it covers almost all uh, kind of uh, so company like it start with a service then you find the big uh, manufacturing one uh, over there and also a public sector company that is BPCL they, that, uh, that is also appearing in the list of top 10 sustainable company. Now the highlights of this uh, report this responsible business ranking report is uh, if you look at the ESG performance of the company it has increased across the board that we will see later when we get into the each component of ESG. First time a service sector company achieved the top rank, manufacturing company continue to perform better than the service company because that is mostly on the basis of the numbers appearing over here. And IT and diversified are the top performing industry while NBFCs are typically the laggards and integrated reporting is ramping of, of 6, 26 percent of the company produce the integrated reports and all the top 10 company they have mapped their business goal into the SDG that is sustainable development goals. So, in next after next few session we will also uh, see what are the sustainable, uh, sustainable development goals and how company they have mapped that into their disclosure and what are the effort they are putting to achieve the sustainable development goals. Now getting into the manufacturing and uh, services, so manufacturing company on an average score far better than the uh, service company overall and across the criteria. So if you look at the uh, top 5 in manufacturing and top 5 in service companies. The manufacturing company is led by Mahindra and Mahindra and service company is led by Infosys and the top 5 manufacturing company Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Chemical, ITC, Vedanta, HUL. In fact, in 2017 also the, when this top 10 sustainable company came all those manufacturing companies were there in that, that list also. Infosys, Wipro, TCS they are also there in the list in they are going on publishing the sustainability report and in fact Wipro does lot of uh, activity with respect to the sustainability outreach. So the total score for uh, manufacturing is 71.7 and for service it is 63.9 and if you go to the specific um, uh, component also on environment, social and governance, so manufacturing in all these cases they are leading that is in an environment 26.6, in social it is 18 and in governance it is 27.1. Now next coming to the ESG for all the company over years, it is this graph shows the uh, progress from 2014 to 2020 and if you look at it is the performance is increasing over years. In few cases you will find that the increase is not very highly significant, but over a period of time the performance in environment and social, environment, social and governance it is increasing over years. Then coming to the industry this also we are mentioning in the beginning that information technology and diversified companies they are the top performing industry and typically the financiers they are yet to pick up their sustainability efforts or the sustainability 
disclosure. So, in information technology total information technology the average score is 82.0 that is by Infosys, in diversified it is ITC that is 77.1, other industrial and this is Adani they have 76.5. Healthcare 73.3, energy 73.3, and similarly, if you look at the financial, is the first time it is HDFC Bank that is 66.7. So, this trend shows that information technology and diversified they are performing better, reporting better as compared to the financial companies. This is the chart for the environment based on the composite score. So, over a period of time this is increasing, the environment performance is increasing and there is a initiative to develop the climate resilient infrastructure, enhance climate resilience and reduce the vulnerability to climate change. There is a partic and for this whatever the initiative is being planned by the corporate for climate resilient infrastructure or increasing climate resilience or reduce the vulnerability, this requires the critical participation from both the companies as well as the government. And specific with respect to renewable energy, we will see the renewable energy also covers in next few slides, but renewable energy forms only a small proportion of the total energy consumed in operations across sector. And the government if you look at whatever the NDC commitment we have given that is uh, what we have to achieve by 2030, the government expect that non-conventional sources to account for almost 40 percent of the total generation capacity by 2027 because that is what based on the goal what we have given as, as a part of our NDC in Paris summit. This is renewable energy uh, performance, this is linked to sustainable development goal 7 and the disclosure of the share of renewable energy in total electricity consume continue to be limited, not showing very significantly high or significantly it is increasing. Tata Motors few of the example in the initiative in the direction of the renewable energy is Tata Motors aspire to operate on 100 percent renewable energy in coming future and their signatory to the RE100 initiative and so is also Dalmia Bharat. Then Maruti Suzuki they are using solar power for lighting its manufacturing plants and office area and now they have also started using solar energy in the manufacturing of the car. So, initially they were using the solar power only for lighting, but they have used the solar energy in the manufacturing of their cars or their production process. Similarly, there are few examples in the renewable energy, use of renewable energy in the supply chain. So, Tata Motors encourage its supply chain partners to fulfill their energy requirements from renewable sources and uh, mostly uh, there are few initiatives with respect to rooftop solar plants. And also because of this rooftop solar plant installation, they have achieved a 12 percent reduction in their carbon emission in 2018-19. This is, this is the Minda Stone Ridge which is the one of the supplier for the Tata Motors. Similarly, United Spirit, they aim to use more renewable energy and improves how it manages to use water, eliminate waste and optimize the packaging design. Although numbers have not given, but they have given that what is their goals or what are mostly with respect to use of renewable energy in their across supply chain. Similarly, Coca-Cola India, they promotes the use of renewables, especially biofuel across in their boiling units. Few more example of BPCL, they are mostly looking into the biodiesel and they are encouraging the biodiesel manufacturing to the use eco as their feedstock that is huge cooking oil. Then uh, HPCL and IOCL, they have issued a letter of intent for setting up the compressed biogas plant and that is the capacity of 20.6 TMTPA spread across Gujarat, Maharashtra, Punjab and West Bengal. Then ONGC has set up a bio CNG fertilizer and bottling plant in Haridwar to convert the cow dung to useful fuel and value added product. Similarly, Indian oil they have undertake a project to convert refinery of gases to ethanol using the, using the Lanjatech technology and also they have implemented a pilot project 50 buses in Delhi with 
Indraprasth Gas Limited to run buses on the reform hydrogen CNG that is HCNG fuel. So, one of the interesting um, highlight of this slide if you look at, look at the profile of the company those who are integrating this huge of renewable energy in their supply chain and typically these are all public sector and this is good to see that even the public sector company also there is we are taking specific initiative for integration of renewable energy in supply chain. Then also um, uh, few of the organization they have used the renewable energy in their e-mobility. But over a, if you look at the trend or if you look at the numbers what is being reported in this responsible business ranking, there is poor adoption of EV by corporate in, uh, India. It is yet to be uh, like taken largely by the organization. Only around 8 percent of the company report the use of electric vehicle in their logistic. They utilize EV for their internal transport, employee commute and also outbound logistic. And Wipro and SPI, they are member of EV100. This is a global initiative by the climate group and it brings together the company that are committed to accelerate the transition of electric vehicle by 2030. These are few of the example in the right hand side of the slide if you see few of the example of electric vehicle in logistic and the company those who have used is GMR, Hero Motor Corp, Tota Power, Tata Power, Power Grid, Wipro and HPCL. Then also there are uh, few of the organization they have taken the initiative of use of renewable energy, resource, uh, renewable energy resources for the community. Around 40 percent of the company they studied from this entire universe those who have given their disclosure, they contribute towards the renewable energy project for community. And this renewable energy project for community consists of lighting and clean fuel that is upgrade solar lighting solution, solar irrigation pumps, biogas plant, solar hot water system, clean fuel stop and solar dryer. And Canra Bank as a part of marketing support they have given the Canra Bahini to enable the women entrepreneur and SSG to exhibit and market their product in Bangalore uh, and other places in Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Coimbatore and Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Now few initiative for e-waste what uh, the information is given by the company in this responsible business reporting. So, for the employee this Tech Mahindra and Cisco they conduct a e-waste collection drive for their employee. Similarly, RFC, the Rusty of Fertilizer and Chemical and Hezdustan Zing, they raise the awareness among employee regarding the e-waste generation on environment and advantage of e-waste disposal in a scientific manner. Similarly, for customer reliance industry and Cisco help their customer to recycle their e-waste. Similarly, for community, convince they par partner with various NGOs, school and local community to create awareness on e-waste. And ITC, they give preference to dealing with IT vendor having a sound e-waste management process and this is typically the e-initiative for the e-waste in the supply chain, also across the supply chain. Similarly, for plastic waste, some leading company across industry, they have placed for plastic free organization in near future. And few of the example for Hito, Hero Motor Corp on single use plastic in its operation, then they also looking at 100 percent of their packaging recyclable, reusable and compostable in near term. And few of them also making this as a part of their extended producer responsibility rule or EPR rules to establish the reverse bending or the collection point for the plastic weight and those organizations are Coca-Cola, Asian Paints and Reliance Smart. Similarly, few more initiative in, uh, in the category of the plastic waste. Now coming to the S part of our ESG performance that is social disclosure practices. So mostly the social disclosure practices and uh, based on two question. How well are the key stakeholders that is employee, community, customer and supplier integrated with a company responsible business framework. So the initiative what the organization they are doing whether it comes under employee centric initiative, customer centric initiative, community centric initiative or supplier centric initiative. And also one of the key component of social parameter is expenditure by company on CSR, how much they are spending on CSR. 
So, this again we will see when we get into the CSR performance of the company, but company have steadily improved their performance on this count, however still they do not have the adequate program on the social space. Similarly, when it comes to governance, how will the governance for responsible business structure, the, this is one base question on which the governance score is, governance disclosure or the governance performance is measure and how forthcoming companies are with respect to responsible business activity and performance. So, with respect to first question how typically is being addressed or how typically the initiatives are being taken is about board oversight of CSR and sustainability issues, managerial accounting, accountability of responsible business issues, then corporate policies and management system, then a formal policy on sustainable practices, a formal CSR policy. Similarly, with respect to the second question that how forthcoming company of how forthcoming are companies with respect to responsible business activity and performance, these are typically measured through how whether they are publishing the sustainability report as per standard such as GRI reports, how they are filling the financial filling with respect to disclosure, how they are participating in global uh, projects such as carbon disclosure project how their business goal is mapped with sustainable development goals and also the external assurance and impact assessment of the responsible reporting. So, based on this performance typically their governance score is decided. So, this is what the governance it has shown the steady improvement over years from 2014 to 2020 and the percentage of company those who have adopted policies regarding which is, uh, which is adding up to our governance is like formal policy on working condition 97 percent those who have disclosure they have said yes. Similarly, uh, the formal policy on discrimination and human right if it exists for the company whether equal pay is there not no discrimination based on gender, race, disability whether that is there in the exist in the company or not and the board diversity that also part of the governance. So, based on that the governance score is decided and there is a steady improvement over years with respect to the governance score for the company. This is the definitive USG universe uh, study finding and typically how Indian company they are doing with respect to the entire ESG universe. So, entire ESG universe is about 9000 public company and the rating if you look at for the Indian company over here. The Indian company typically they are leading with respect to average transparency rating, CSR and sustainability reports, ESG related executive compensation where the score is lower than the ESG universe, then business ethics policy, then policy on bribery and corruption. So, these are few of the uh, performance of the Indian company with respect to transparency, sustainability report, ethics policy, bribery and corruption. So, to summarize the uh, how Indian companies they are doing with respect to sustainability or with respect to the business responsibility, these are few of the key trends which have been identified by this responsible business uh, ranking in futurescape that this is the year also we have seen the importance because pandemic has taught us many things. And one of the important thing what has taught us taught for the business is that it has highlighted the importance for responsible environmentally friendly growth, increased demand for green recovery world over, then the informed customer are actively looking for the sustainable product and company and they treat their stakeholder well. So, if mostly if the customers accepting the product accepting the company. Uh, then the company performance is better than the other company and how the customer they are accepting the company that is with respect to the product if it is a sustainable product how the company they are treating with, uh, with their stakeholder based on that the ex acceptance from the customer is coming for the product and coming for the company. Then investors are increasingly investing in ESG fund and volume of this fund in fact it has increased like anything on the ESG fund. And company that rank high on ESG provide the higher return and tend to have a lower cost of capital. And this is what in fact uh, summarize the uh, entire uh, what to say the uh, 
perception or entire the question what the businesses they keep on asking when they take a sustainability initiative, what it gives us back, whether it is only the improving the brand, improving the perception of the company as a green company, sustainable company. But if you look at based on this trend, the sustainability, if you take the sustainability initiative of your performing better in your ESG, that also gives a higher return and tend to have a lower cost of capital, which is crocs for the business to sustain financially in the short run and in the long run. Thank you.